To talk to us today on the social aspects of climate change, Mirai Chatterjee is the director of the social security team at Self-Employed Women's Association, SEVA. From a socio-economic perspective, what does being informal mean? More than 93% of the Indian workforce is informal, is engaged in the informal economy. And if we speak of the women's workforce, it's more than 94%. So we're talking cumulatively of upwards of 500 million workers. Uh, so informal means, as you rightly said, no fixed employer-employee relationship. And the mass of informal workers in India are purely self-employed. They don't have any employer-employee relationship at all. So really, we are talking about the unprotected, vast labor force of our country. And if I speak about informal women workers, as you might expect, they are the worst off. They get the worst and most hazardous work that men also will not do. So there is a gender dimension to the poverty. So it's informal overlap between informality, poverty, and gender. And yet another, which is now lately called intersectionality, which means that most of the informal workers come from the most deprived castes and communities and religious minority groups of India. The real change may lie within these small enterprises. How have you seen it and how do they see this phenomenon? Sure. Importantly, they're all small and decentralized and local and grassroots. We don't seem to do very well in scaling up. And the other point I wanted to make is that most of these are green businesses. Let me explain. For example, erstwhile waste recyclers, women who go through the garbage, women and children, and collect recyclables, they have now formed their own stationary cooperative, where from the recycled paper, they make uh, pads and notebooks and so on. So that is a green and sustainable enterprise. Similarly, small farmers. These are not farmers who, you know, grow huge monocultures of maize or wheat. They grow some crops like rice and wheat because they have to for survival for their own food. And then they sell the marketable surplus. And then they grow cash crops like vegetables, fruit, sugar cane, or what have you, cotton, and so on. So for all these reasons, you know, I would say that these nano and survival enterprises of informal workers, particularly women, are by their very nature green. Do you see opportunities which can be scalable if there is access to large pools of long-term capital? The opportunities are tremendous. Investing in women is the best investment you could make, particularly at the grassroots. And as is well known, invest in women and you're investing in the whole family and the community. Uh, We have the issue of low women's workforce participation in India. And one of the major reasons is that they don't have access to childcare. Our experience has shown is that when you invest in childcare, like say through a cooperative, when you have creches, daycare for young children, then women's income doubles. Investments are needed. Uh, which is not only building human capital and social capital, but also makes good economic sense. 